second chapter. Lesson number 9. The various elements of your show, the adjustment menu. First part. We have seen in the preceding lessons, all different type of layer accepted or generated by Prosha. Prosha is a complete program that allows the processing and modification of all layers, and that, at several levels. The adjustment tab we will describe now allows pre-treatment of your layers, one by one, and independently of each other. In this tab you will find two types of treatment. The first, named also, adjustments, allows you to change the photographic type on your layer. And second, Ditting Tools, allows physical modifications or adding element to Rito. We will see the first in this lesson. Open your program, add a new blank slide. Then open the window slide options. Now add a layer, we use a layer of image type, but all commands have the same effect on all types of layers. Open the adjustment tab, by clicking on its name. The left side is the same for all three taps. It contains all the elements of your slide. So we now have a layer of type image in the list of layers. The upper central window is the preview of your show. In stopped mode, only the selected layer in the list is normal exposure. All others are in low light. In playback mode, you then view your normal slide. Just to the right, you have the preview window of your layer. It is composed of two images. The upper image is your layer in its original form, and the bottom, your layer with the changes added in this tab. Above left, you have the original file name, the file name in your show, and the command to rename it. Below you will find three buttons identical to the control tab, set in layer. Reminder. Browse, you can select another file for this layer. Addition, opens the editing window it. Infosend opens the window containing the digital information in your file. Now see the adjustment part. It is composed of eight sliders, divided into three groups. The first group consists of three sliders, adjusting the sharpness of your layer and transparency. The first. Blur, allows the creation of blur your layer. Blur is spreading each pixel within larger and larger, and mixing with other pixels in covered. Move your cursor slowly to the far right until the blur level to 100%. You will notice that the higher the level of blur, the greater your layer is enlarged, with a decreasing transparency on the edges. 100%, the blur radius is roughly equivalent to 100 pixels, which gives then a layer of expanded 200 pixels. This, for a value of 100% for the zoom. Also, we have a decreasing transparency 200 pixels. Indeed, the layer 100 is extended outwardly pixels, but the outside is regressively also mixed by 100 pixels of the layer inwardly directory you can see the results you get in your showing the preview window and your layer before and after processing in the preview window of the selected layer. Above, right, in the title bar of the menu, you have a counterclockwise arrow, it allows you to reset to their default values, all the trimmings this menu. Right click on it to reset the blur command that you just modified. The following command, sharpen. It allows you to adjust the hardness of your image. It to the contrary blur, each group of pixels, within more and more, will be resetting color compared to the dominant color in suppressing blur. Slowly move your cursor to the 100% value. You notice the effect obtained, a repixelization, giving a net, but also harder to your layer. You can compare the before and after effect in the selected layer window. Reset to zero the value sharpen. The last command of this first part is, Opacity. It allows you to adjust the transparency of your layer. Of origin, it is 100%, unlike the first two, that it is at 0%. Slowly move your cursor to the left, to 0%. 
your layer disappears gradually until it becomes completely transparent. As with all the trimmings, you also have a numeric field, showing the value defined by the cursor. You can also directly enter the desired value. Made a test by entering the value 50%. This value, your layer is semi-transparent, but on a black background, it does not show the actual transparency. Reset the default value, and add a second layer. To do this, click on the plus symbol in the list of layers, and add a picture contrasts with the first. Move there in the second layer, therefore, below the first, with a click on the down arrow. It is this layer which is now selected. And, as we said at the beginning of this lesson, only the selected layer is full brightness, and others are semi-transparency. Select your first layer, simply left-clicking on it in the list of layers. Now, it is he who is in full visibility, and the second layer is in. Redone now, move the cursor opacity from 100% to 0% and from 0% to 50%. You can better see the effect of transparency of the first layer to the second. Restore the default value of your first layer, and delete the second layer. To do this, select it in the list of layers, and then made a click on the minus sign. The combined use of blur and opacity effect, already allows you to create a simple effect of disappearance or appearance of a picture in your show, as in this example, or we go from 0 to 100% effect blur, and 100 to 0% opacity of the effect at the same time and vice versa. Now see the second group. It is also composed of three trimmings playing on the brightness levels of your layer. The first. Brightness is the brightness levels of your layer, equivalent level of photographic exposure. Notice that the level 0 is the center of control Rob's three orders, because they allow you trimmings from minus 100% to plus 100%. Made a test by moving the cursor first to the extreme left, then to the far right, and finally back to its starting position. You see as negative values, your layer becomes darker, until it almost completely black, at minus 100%, and that, conversely, it is becoming increasingly clear to positive values, to be almost white, to 100%. The second, white point adjusts the levels of light colors by changing the value or position of the white in the brightness scale. Let's try. Move the cursor to the extreme left, minus 100%, then to the far right, to 100%, then bring it to the center at 0%. What do we see? The negative value, the value of the white level is changed, and minus 100%, white is black, and therefore, given the scale of brightness ranging from black to black, all colors are zero intensity, and your layer is completely black. For positive values, there is the position of the white in the scale, which is moved into the black. To 100% white in the position of the scale is in the center thereof. This gives that for all values measuring range from white and gray means your layer, they are brought to a maximum brightness, or, white, and the value of the average gray to black, white to now black, and thus their brightness is multiplied by 2. This is a bit of gibberish. Do the same trimmings on the gradient from white to black, and then you can see the movement of intensities relative to trimming the white point. This command is useful in the case of a layer underexposed to force the highlights. The third control of the second group, black point. Like its predecessor, it adjusts the brightness levels, but it plays on dark tones. Made as for the previous. Move your cursor to the extreme left, minus 100%, then to the far right, to 100%, and bring it to the center at 0%. This time, you see that it is the position of black, which is moved in your brightness scale, up to the position of medium gray at minus 100%, and for positive values, they brighten your layer until it becomes completely white at 100%. See the same example as previously, on a gradient from white to black, and you can see the changes intensity on the scale. 
This command is till it in the case of a layer overexposed, to force the dark tones. To the right of this is three orders, there is a command button named, Auto. If you click it, the computer will search for the best trimming's brightness to your layer. If I click on this layer with here, the computer just lessen the brightness to minus 18%. Of course, the computer will adjust the values according to a protocol pre-written, and it just does not match your expectations for all images, or sometimes present surprises. Reset the values to their default position. There remains a group of two commands. First, Contrast is a more standard photographic control. It allows you to change the contrast of your layer. As the three preceding commands, the 0% position is at the center. Move your cursor to minus 100%, far left, then up to 100%, with the extreme right, and back to 0% in the center. The balance point of the intensity in the contrast control is exactly in the center, the mean gray level. So, when you decrease contrast, white level and black are gradually brought to gray until your layer is completely gray at minus 100%. And the tones are forced to white and black, both sides of medium gray, when you increase the contrast level. This command is very useful for old photos whose colors have faded with time, or to give an antique effect to recent photographs. The last command in this menu. Hue. This command performs a chromatic color shift while maintaining their intensity. Try it by moving the slider from 0 to 100%. We note that the colors of your layer are changed on the full range of tones to return to their initial values at 100%. Why? Regardless of their intensity, colors depart from red to yellow, then green, cyan, blue, magenta, and finally back to red. Or name of coding, RGB, red, green, blue. Remember, the color circle color controls. Apply these colors to a gradient, and then perform the complete removal of the hue control, from 0 to 100%. You can see that, more or less, the gradient has shifted to the right relative to the original color, and as the beginning and end are the same, when we are 100% color find themselves in the same position as 0%. Please note that this command influences only chroma level, not the level of intensity, it is impossible to give a negative effect to your layer. Well, all these commands provide a basic level of your layer, but you will see below, these commands are also available in the effects tab, and in the last, they may be temporarily and, or, punctually modified. We will return at length in the next chapter. In the next lesson, we will see the Dig in Tools menu, which allows you a lot of other effects on your layer. Thank you for your attention.